What's up everybody? This is H4T and I'm coming at you with another knife review. Uh, guys, I've been starting to get in um, to Benchmades for some reason. Uh, I'm really liking the axis lock and some of the different features of Benchmade knives. You have not seen me do a lot of reviews on Benchmade in the past, but pre-YouTube uh, I have owned several di different Benchmade knives and now I find myself uh, definitely getting back into the brand. I got a couple Benchmade knives the other one I'm not going to show until I get a lot of use on, but the other knife that I'm not showing today, I'm really loving it so far. Some of you could probably guess what it is. It's very popular. <laughs> but um, today, the one I'm going to review is the 707 sequel. Uh, right here. Now, this is not an unboxing because this has been opened and I have uh, been carrying this one around. And as you can see by the little card in there, it of course is the Axis Lock, as you'll see on the knife itself. Now what you get is of course the blue box and the little Benchmade baggie, which is nice to keep the knives in. And also when the knife is brand new, there's a little plastic bag that it comes with as well, but I have a plastic bag in another room right now. Because, uh, like I said, I've already been carrying this guy around. So I'm going to get into the uh, pluses and minuses, basically. The positives and negatives that I have found so far with this knife. And uh, I'd have to say right off the bat that the positives of this guy do outweigh the negatives. Uh, I like it a lot so far. You get a lot of, for the size of knife that it is, you get an awful lot of blade, guys. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that here in a little bit. Now, one of the first things that you're going to notice here is uh, the handle material. Now, the handle is an aircraft-grade aluminum on the outside here. It is a uh, 6061T6 aircraft-grade aluminum that's milled out on both sides and there is a piece of G10 inlay put in there just to give you some better traction and things like that when you hold the knife and I'll show you that when I open it up. So that's what the outside material is made of and the blade on this guy is 154 cm. Now you can see how um, I just opened that guys. This is one of the smoothest opening pocket knives that I've ever handled and that is not a joke. Uh, I have no reason to tell you otherwise. Um, I'm going to be honest and as thorough as I can with this review. I have not had a lot or a ton of time on this knife. But from the time that I have had with it, I feel I can do a fair review so far on the knife. Okay. Now, uh, the blade is a clip point style blade. And it's almost pretty much the same size as a as the Benchmade Mini Grip. Okay, but you have a definitely a different handle. Now this knife is going to run you. I did find this knife for $109 on eBay. But if you don't go to eBay, uh, you can pay anywhere from, you know, 120 on up to as high as 160 depending on where you go. But I did find it brand new on eBay. And there is more of them on there for uh, $109 shipped. So that's where I got mine from, just going from the cheapest place that I could find. Now it does have the standard Benchmade pocket clip. Right here, as you see, with a split in the middle, this pocket clip works very well. And I'm going to tell you guys, um, any more, I'm finding that... <laughs> I hate to say this, because I used to not feel this way. But I do not want a bulky knife in my pocket anymore. You know, I have a gun or guns on me uh, when I'm out and about and daily activities and there's no reason for me to have to carry a knife uh, that's the size of a small sword okay so basically the thing is with this guys when I had this in my pocket it's so slim you can see right there the thickness of it I don't even know it's there I used to carry knives that were big enough that when you sat down it would pull the pocket like if it's clipped in the pocket right here on the material I would feel the pocket bulge out around the knife like this and pull on the pocket. I no longer do that anymore. <laughs> I want to go with something that's light, um, you know, less ounces, easier to carry. And this guy right here has got it all day in that roll. And you guys can see here how smooth this thing is. 
Um, I've flipped it probably, literally probably 300 times, no joke. Just once you start flipping this thing, it's addicting. You just can't stop, and it's so smooth. Now you can see the axis lock right here, and as I go to open the knife, you will see the axis, uh, the piece in there move in the axis lock as it goes open. And then as you close it, you'll notice also that as you get about right here, when it moves, when your detent kicks in right there. It has a pretty nice detent to it. It feels like once it gets to a certain point, it feels like it pulls downward uh, on its own right there, once it gets to that point. And from that point on, you can either just do that and fling the knife, or you can use the thumb stud, um, close it with the axis lock, open it with the axis lock, however you want to do it. Uh, I've been playing with this knife and I find it very comfortable to open any in any way you want to do it like that. Now the only <laughs> one of the bad things I have to say about this knife guys is not long after flipping the knife open and closed I mean it wasn't a lot of time at all that I was doing this with the knife and uh, as you can see here I did let me get this to focus in and I'll show you that I did get a little bit of blade play. See that? Right there. No up and down whatsoever, which is the most important. That's what you do not want is up and down. But I got a little bit of side to side after flipping this thing maybe 50 times. But it's not a problem. Benchmade mentioned something about uh, putting some Loctite on the screw. I guess obviously they don't and I'm definitely a, um, a big fan of Loctite, so I will Loctite that screw and put the screw back in and it will not move, especially if Benchmade, which I believe they did not Loctite it in the first place. But that little bit of side to side isn't a big deal. It, the lock will not fail with this little bit of side to side movement that you see right there. And just taking one of the tools I have, putting it in there and just giving a little uh, quarter turn would stop it and then unscrewing it and putting Loctite on it would cure the problem so that's not really a big deal now what you'll find is the handle is small you can see right here that the handles pretty small um, you know for a uh, regular hand like this um, you're gonna see that a lot of people talk about that your little finger is going to not really be on the knife at all but it still to me feels like I have good grip and I can feel this jimping. This jimping is cut really low, but I can feel that digging into my thumb. I'm getting traction on it right there. Uh, but for me, <laughs> being right-handed, as you can see, this knife works out perfect for me, fits me fine. Um, I don't know how useful the G10 inlay is, but I do know that my hand is catching it, you know, at certain points and things like that. Uh, not for sure about why you would need G10 inlay on the back under the clip right there. But uh, what I find is this G10 isn't grippy enough at all to snag pants. It's in fact this is a, one of the smoothest G10 textures that I've felt on a knife. So this does not at all tear up your pants that G10 under the pocket clip. It does give it a nice look and I guess it's cool that it's on both sides like that. But um, you know I just there's really no use in this one because there's no way that your fingers are going to hit that G10 under the clip. Now another thing that I really <laughs> don't understand too much is why Benchmade would, would use steel liners even though they're drilled out down in there. Why they would use steel liners when you have an aircraft grade aluminum handle. Uh, you, they could have made the knife a little bit lighter had they not used the drilled out steel liners but you know what guys this knife is so light I'm really not gonna complain about it at all this knife weighs under three ounces it weighs 2.9 ounces to be exact so if you're uh, if you're wanting something small that you're not even gonna realize it's on you but it's there for when you need it for any kind of EDC task um, now guys here's the thing nine times out of ten an EDC knife is going to be used for uh, cutting food, cutting fruit, opening packages, opening boxes, little chores and things that you're going to encounter from day to day. It's very rare that you're ever going to need a knife for self-defense, especially if you carry a gun or guns on you. 
So, uh, some guys might think that this is a little bit too small. I don't think it is. The blade is just a hair under three inches. I don't think it's too small. And as you'll notice, the blade grind goes all the way to the bottom of the blade. You don't have a big choil here, and then the cutting edge starts. Uh, you actually have more cutting edge on this than you do a Spyderco Delica. So as far as um, tactical, I would not call this a tactical knife. But could you use this in an emergency to defend your life? And I'm going to definitely have to say that you could use this in an emergency to save your life. Anybody that doesn't believe me or doesn't agree with that, um, go look up pictures online of things prisoners have made and have slashed other prisoners to ribbons with. Prisoners will take a little piece of a razor blade that's about that long and about that wide, and they'll melt the handle of a toothbrush and while it's hot, affix this piece of razor blade to the handle of the toothbrush or any kind of other object. And they will slice a guy to ribbons. So don't tell me that a blade this long is not going to do its job if you need to do it. Um, I'm not going to get into all this, but there is also a thing of knowing where to cut, where to hit somebody if you need. And I'm only talking about guys legally defending your life. Uh, if you feel that your life is in danger or serious bodily injury is going to happen to you or a family member. Okay? But there is places on a human body that you could take this knife to that you are going to put a guy out of commission with no problem whatsoever. So yes, while this is suited to EDC and, EDT and EDC tasks and not a tactical knife, you could in an emergency use this and save your life. Okay, now the blade did come very sharp. I'm going to cut some hairs on my arm. And the hairs were popping off, and you can see on the blade right there all the hairs that are there. Uh, I'll use the tip here to show you. See how that bald spot right there? And there's all the hair that it just took off, and that's just lightly. Um, Look, hairs popped all the way to my lap and landed on my phone. This is a factory edge, and I had this phone behind the camera on my lap, and there's hairs you see from my arm that were just f popping up and flying in the air from, this, from the blade of this knife. So yes, what I'm trying to show you with that is this blade does come sharp, this 154CM. I am a fan of 154CM, by the way, guys. Um, let's talk about something else that I find different with this knife and the other Benchmade that I have that I'm doing field testing on that will be coming up for review. Uh, if you look here at the hilt, uh, that's what I'm going to call it. I can't think of the specific term. Benchmade knives like this, now I love the design of this knife, so I wouldn't change anything. But I am not used to having the thumb come up like this and then just a dead drop down to the blade. Okay, I'm not used to that. To me that's a little awkward and if you want to come forward you've got a shoulder in your thumb and your the top of your thumb is resting on the blade. Let me show you a reference to what I'm talking about when we're going to use the Spyderco PPT Perrin. Okay, and this knife feels like it weighs a ton after that. Notice how the top of the knife is even pretty much even with the back of the knife. There's a little bit of raise there, but now if I come forward with my thumb, I can go all the way up as high as I need to go, and it feels level and even to me. This is what most knives that I have and I handle I'm used to, where it's even all the way out right here. This, has, this does have a transition, a bump, where it jumps down. So if you're, you know, it's just something I guess you have to get used to. If you're carrying it like, the, or if you're holding it like this, you do have that space. And if you want to come forward, I guess you could just put the tip of your thumb and rock it like that. But uh, you're going to have that shoulder of the knife right there pushing into your thumb. But I guess if they had to do that for the sake of the design of this knife, then I'm okay with that. And I'll tell you why this is one of the best designed knives that, that I would say in the production market that I've ever seen. Look at the handle size compared to the blade. The length, okay? The handle is not much longer than what the blade is. Now let's close the knife. 
and I'll show you how close, and this blade is a little off center now because the pivot needs a little bit of adjustment so it's not a big deal. See how close the edge of the blade comes to the end of the knife? They used up all the room they could in there with this blade, okay? This knife is so fun to open and close. I think I would have bought it just for that. <laughs> but it's so close in there. And I'll show you um, when we compare it to another knife. Say this PPT Perrin. Look how the handle looks like it's much larger comparing it to the blade. See how much handle you have here? And then when you close this PPT Perrin, you see it's not real far from the end of the knife, but up here you have a lot of extra. See? Your blade's down here when it's closed and you have a lot of extra up here. So the handle appears to be much larger than the blade and you'll find that on most pocket knives where the handle always appears much larger. With this, it looks like you're getting a lot of blade out of that handle. And for me, I just think it's a perfect EDC knife. If you want to go lightweight and have a knife on you for everyday chores, I don't think that you can beat this Benchmade uh, 707 sequel McHenry and Williams design. All right, guys, this is H4T, and that's my review 707 sequel. I'll get with you guys soon. I'm out.